Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we have struck gold. We're rich. We're filthy freaking rich. We got, uh, we're kind of structured deck. <laughs> we're, we're filthy rich here. We're rolling in dough. I'm on my way to buy a Bugatti right now. We went and picked up the new Lorcana structure today, both of them actually, and a couple packs, and a really cool deck box. Um, we got the Milan one. I'll show that when we actually go to the hand cam, but for now, take my word for it. Um, so we picked up a couple of the new Lorcana product today. I really tried to get a Trove or the uh, 100 gift bundle thing. Didn't really go according to plan. But we did get one of each structure that we can open up. We get a pack out of that. And then I picked up a couple packs to open in another video. Uh, the way I'm thinking I'm going to do this, we're going to do one structure per video and then one pack video. And yeah, that way we have content, baby. But yeah, today we are going to be looking at the Amber Sapphire deck. Thank God they print the name of the color on the packaging or i would butcher it because i'm not really sure um without further ado if you're new to the channel make sure to like comment down below subscribe if you aren't already uh because we are going to be making more connor content too in addition to the one piece and the vanguard and the uh pokemon and yeah we have a lot going on right now so <laughs> uh make sure to subscribe to the channel to show your support for me running around like a madman playing multiple different trading card games even though you have nothing to do with it so we have here the rise of the floodborne structure deck the amber and sapphire um featuring the queen and gaston but not a bumbling idiot and intelligent in addition to being strong pretty much everything gaston could have been uh, from the very beginning, but now perfected. He's been perfected, flooded with power, becoming a Lumineer and wield magic ink. You summon Glimmer of Disney character together with your team, you'll challenge opposing a Lumineer, what you're called in Lorcana, an Illumineer. As you write to collect the Outer Lore. The really cool thing I like about Lorcana, like the really cool concept of the game, um, you're not trying to deal damage to the enemy player or anything like that. Obviously, you're trying to challenge their character and knock him off the board. Um, but the main mechanic is lore. Pretty much, you're questing every turn, the equivalent of tapping a character, gathering lore, trying to get to 20 before your opponent, and win. So, by doing that, you have ink. I'm sure you, those of you that are watching the video already know, um, but in case you're new to Lurkana, you have a mana equivalent called ink, except you have cards, and we'll go over a little bit more, uh, that have an inkable icon, meaning that you can take them, put them in your ink wall face down, not look at them anymore for the remainder of the game, get an ink, uh, pay the ink, play a card, let the ink dry, let it cook, if I'm judging by the one effect of getting yeah, done that I can make out here, it's called develop brain, and there's a blue card in chapter one called develop your brain, where you, um, ramp pretty much you gain advantage through like card draw and inking and everything like that i'd imagine a board flood um ramp deck if i had to put money on it i don't really know um the only fun fact the only structure deck i bought for chapter one was the um ruby emerald with aladdin and cruella um and i never got any lorcana after that so i'm actually pretty green with the whole thing I mean, I'm technically pretty red and green. I think I would show you the deck box. I'm not going to open it right now. It'll be a quick little, like, I thought, because my brain doesn't work properly. And I get off track. Um, but I got the Milan deck box here. They had the other one. I'm drawing a blank on the name of the blue dragon guy. It would be really cool if we pulled the enchanted version of him. That way I could I could learn the name of the character. That would be so cool. I think we should do that. Uh, but I have the Mulan one because I like Mulan a lot. It is a uh, top three favorite movie of mine within the Disney universe. Um, but yeah, we are going to open up our deck. The pack will be the final thing we touch. And yeah, let's do it. You get a play mat. Uh, it is, yeah, pretty much the same as the chapter one mat. Uh, I'll turn it this way. I really don't feel like panning out the camera. Um, it's a 
like a little sheet of paper that you can put your deck on, all that. Not bad. Um, there are official Lorcana playmats. They have a what I can only describe as Winnie the Pooh Dark Magician playmat that I really want. Um, keep an eye out for it. If you have one, drop a comment down below. If you're selling it for a reasonable amount of money, let me let me buy it. I want it. Um, so we have the Queen, the Commanding Presence, the um, I guess you could call it the Amber Bond unit. So for Shift Two, you can play. You can pay two ink to play them on top of a the Queen character that you already have. Um, and it's got the little inkable icon up here too. Which pretty much says, hey, you can put that card in your inkwell if you want on your turn and uh, gain an ink for it. Uh, and the ability who the fairest, whenever the character would quest, you get to choose an opposing character and uh, take away four strength from it and give a character of your four strength. Very good ability. I get why they only made it a one of in the deck. Uh, and then next we have Gaston, an electrical power having very cool card. I love the cold foiling in Lurkana. It's such a pretty way of foiling, in my opinion. So for shift four, again, pay four, pay it on to uh, playing on top of another Gaston that you have. Um it can go really well in conjunction with the red Gaston, uh for, or Ruby, I guess I should call it. Um to kinda Call over top of it, and uh, you get three lore with him. Develop brain. When you play the character, look at the top three cards in your deck. You may put one into your hand, put the rest on the bottom of your deck in any order. Very good card for um, deck thinning, I guess, in a way, for milling through your deck to get what you want when you want it, pretty much. You're stacking the deck in your favor. Very cool. Uh, and then we have Bashful Ogosh, the character can't quest unless you have another Seven Dwarf character in play. We get two Bashful. We get Christopher Robin. Love Winnie the Pooh. Huge fan. Uh, we'll always be together whenever you ready the character. If you, if you have two or more other characters in play, gain two lore. That's insane, actually. Uh, Doc, the leader of the Seven Dwarves, share and share alike whenever the character requests. Uh, you pay one ink lens for the next character you play. You get two Doc. Uh, dopey, I went out when, when the character is banished, your other Seven Dwarf character you get two strength until the start of your following turn. We get two Dopey. And then we have. Gaston Baritone Bully. I mean, that's actually really accurate. <laughs> I can't even argue with that. Uh, the cool thing about Gaston, he's a 3 ink caught 3 3 with a singer 5. That's pretty good for playing your song card out so, um, with only a 3 drop, really, for free. Get 3 of him. And we get the Grand Duke. A 2 ink, uh, 2 2. Yes, Your Majesty, your prince, princess, king, and queen characters get an extra strength. Uh, and then we have Grumpy, my boy. That's me when I wake up in the morning for work and I don't have any caffeine in me. That's me right there. Uh, Grumpy Bad Tempered, a 4 ink, 3 4. They're in trouble of brewing. Your other seven dwarf characters get an extra strength. Then we have Happy. Happy is a five ink, three, five, two lore. Uh, with support, whenever the character would quest, you may add their strength to another chosen character's strength for the turn. LeFou. Yellow LeFou, or Amber LeFou, I should say, is a very good card. Um, he good in ruby amber to ramp up your ga your gas on that can hit really hard uh, and challenge every turn because you if you have a gas done character out with that deck if you didn't know you can play him for one and if you have a lantern out you pay him, you play him for free at that point 
Uh, but for two lore two, he for a two lore two drop, he's pretty good. And then we have Leapy Holton, uh, nodding off. A two ink two three with yawn. Uh, he entered and play ignited or tapped. And for more familiar terminology, and then we have the A two drop uh, one four with Achu. Whenever you play the character or another seven dwarf character, you may give a two character minus one strength return. We get three of him, uh, and then we have our girl No White. A two ink two three, one more. I won't hurt you. When you play this character, you may remove up to two damage from a chosen character. Um, that's a good card. I do think the Amber Repugnant is a little better because you're drawing cards off of the damage that you heal. Again, with Ruby Amber, the Repugnant little Maui combo is really good. And then we have the Queen Regal Monarch. Uh, a one drop, two two, vanilla. One lore, we get three. Uh, painting the room red. They can say two drop uh, action on up to two chosen characters. They get minus one strength return. Draw a card. Very good. Uh, Bell, inventive engineer. Another cool card that I like the artwork for a lot. A three drop, two, three, two lore, and the tinker. Effect whenever the character request you pay one ink length for the next item card that you play. Uh, Corella de Ville, the fashionable crew there. A two ink three two with now get going during your turn. The character gains evasive, meaning they can challenge characters with evasive, or they can quest and. I mean, nothing will happen at that point, but you can hit an evasive character with Cruella. Uh, we get three there. We get a. I think we get one. We get one here in Flaversham. Um, a four drop, one top shield. With Artifact there, when you play the character, whenever he would quest, you may banish one of your items to draw two. Very good. Uh, Judy Hop. Love Utopia. Banger movie. Highly recommend. Go watch. A three drop two three with two lore. Don't call me cute. I'm going to call you cute, Juki Ha, because you're adorable. Anyway. And no, I am not a furry. No further question. Uh, don't call me cute. When you play the character, may banish a chosen item. Uh, the player in control of that would draw a card. We get two, and we owl from Winnie the Pooh. A one ink two two, vanilla. We get three. We get Bill, our boy, our thick boy. A two ink three one, with support like before. Um, add Phil strength to another character. We get the knock. Sorry, I am trying to tighten up my deck underneath me here. We get the knock, a 4 drop, 4 3 with ward. Um, pretty much that gives the character protection to everything but challenging. So, uh, banish effect don't work. Very good. Three of. We get Winnie the Pooh having a think. A 3 drop, 2 3 with 2 lore and honey pot. Whenever the character would quest, you may put a card from your hand in your inkwell. Very good for ramp. Um, again, I get why he would only be a one of because that's really good um, for ramping up. We get four dozen eggs. For those of you at home, that would be a whopping 48 eggs. Uh, a character with four or more thing for free. That, again, where the gas on five, the five thing would come into play there. Um, your character is getting reset 2 until the dark of your following turn, meaning damage dealt to them would be lowered by 2. Uh, we have a launch. An action. Banish chosen an item of your and deal 5 damage to an opponent, an opponent and character. Very good. Uh, we have the Fang Crocodile. Careful aim. Uh, tap it for, uh, tap it and pay to ink. 
Um, chosen character will get my two strength. Tap it and banish the item. Banish chosen and dragon character. That's a really good Maleficent dragon killer right there. Uh, and then we have the gumbo pot. In effect, tap, remove one damage each from up to two chosen characters. Very good. And then we get the paw pinnacle. We have Jumbo Pop. When you play the item, you may draw a card, and that red would banish the uh, banish the item, remove up to two damage from a chosen character at three copy. Overall, I think our general idea of play big thing, control board ramp before your opponent can was kind of correct. Um, now, do I think the deck will have moderation? Now, do I think the deck will definitely have modification and alteration? Yeah, for sure. Um, I don't expect either structure to be wholly competitive out of the gate with um, Ruby Amethyst Control and Ruby Amber Midrange and all that. Um, I actually played on Pick Morton a uh, Ruby Sapphire Ramp Aggro deck that cooked pretty hard. If you, if you want, I'll drop the deck link in uh, the comment and let me know. And finally, we have our lone pack of Bloodborne that came with our deck. Will we hit an Enchanted? Will we hit a Super Rare? Will we hit Jack Diddley Watt? We're about to find out. Our first pack of that, too. Ever. We can never, never change that again. Oh, we hit the uh, left flashlight of the Forbidden One here. For Mini. Uh, we hit a Lady Tremaine. Overbearing Monarch. Or Matriarch, rather. Uh, when you play a character, each opponent with more lore than you lose. One more. Very good. Hey, we hit another Gaston, but in green. It's the green flavored Gaston. Yes, I'm intimidating. While one or more opponents have no card in their hand, then the character gets an extra three strength. Another gumbo pot for our deck for damage healing. We have another sleepy beepy boy. Legend of the Oregon Stone. Um, the Arthur and like the Oregon Stone card in here, like Arthur Merlin, uh, Madame Mim, all of them are very good. Um, the Arthur card that can kind of like bounce things back to your hand and give lore is nutty, absolutely nutty. I I played a, against a Ruby Amethyst deck on uh, Pixelborn that ran that, and it it did a lot. It really cooked. Uh, very good card. Uh, chosen character gain Challenger plus three. They get an extra three when they challenge. Uh, Cinderella Knight and Tranging. A good card for steal. Uh, have courage when you play the character. You may draw a card, then choose and draw a card. Uh, we got card children. They are two lower five five five. We got mount armor protection. Tap chosen character gain and resist one damage dealt not by one. We got bell bookworm. Use your imagination while an opponent has no card in their hand. Give bell. Bookworm and extra two lore. Uh, we got Gruesome and Grim. Uh, on for three. Play a character with con four or lower for free. They gain Rush at the end of the turn, banish them. They can challenge the turn that they're playing, uh, but they get banished. Falling down the rabbit hole. Each player chooses one of their characters and puts them into their inkwell fate. No, and they're good. Very good. And we got a foil Cruella de Vil. Okay. That can go in the deck for sure. I do like foil. And that is our first structure deck of two. And our first uh, Lorcana pack of eight in total, I think. Uh, anyway, if you enjoyed the video, guys, make sure to like, comment down below. Let me know if you picked up any Floodborne. Uh, let me know if you've been playing Lorcana. What you think of the game, what you think of the availability of the product, anything like that down below. I'm happy to talk about it. I'm, I've been very vocal about it. 
with my friend. I probably wish I would just shut up. Um, but yeah, we have a little bit more to open in future videos. And I hope you'll tune in and watch. Anyway, I will catch you all in the next video. Bye, everybody. Oh,